This is cannabis, a tall plant with a stiff, upright stem and granular hairs on it, also known as marijuana, weed or pot. Cannabis is made up of more than a hundred components, but for the sake of the video, as an investor, you will only have to remember the following two. The first one is CBD. It is commonly used for medical purpose for things like seizure disorder, anxiety, pain relief or muscle disorder. It is not an addictive substance and uh, no it doesn't make a person high by itself. The second one is THC which is the evil component of cannabis by conventional standard. The full name of it, go look it up on YouTube, I can't pronounce that. Now, THC is the principal psychoactive component of cannabis which is responsible for most of marijuana's psychological effects, aka making a person high. Now we can broadly divide the application into two types which are medical and recreational use. For medical purposes, marijuana is often used to treat Alzheimer's disease, cancer, eating disorder, pain, mental health problems like schizophrenia. It does the job by reducing anxiety, reducing inflammatory, uh, slowing tumor growth and also relaxing tight muscles. And for recreational purpose, it makes people high. There are several ways of consuming it. You could smoke it, drink it, eat it or apply it. There is this revolutionary wave of Cannabis 2.0 to penetrate the existing market by offering the herb in different forms. Now if we dissect the industry, there are three key segments in the supply chain. The first one being cultivation, second extraction and testing and third distribution and retail. So the first part is cultivation. It is basically growing the cannabis plants. Now this segment is considered the most saturated in the industry where you have farmers and backyard growers doing the same thing as the big corporation. The barrier of entry of this segment is low. Now the second part of it is extraction and testing. Basically it is to take out the desired substance from cannabis and turn it into consumable or medical goods. Now this part is what differentiate an amateur growers and the big corporations as you will need extensive knowledge in chemical engineering or biochemistry to conduct the extraction and to test whether the proportion is within the regulation. The last part of the industry is distribution and retail which is basically to deliver the finished good to end users. Example for this segment could be traditional brick and mortar stores or online sellers. It is the most visible part of the business. Now if we look at any big players in the industry, you are likely to see an, a vertically integrated business that does everything from cultivation to production to distribution of the finished good. Now let me describe the market using a few macro statistics both in the US and the global market. 47 states out of the 50 in the US have legalized the medical use of cannabis. 11 states out of 50 have legalized the, the recreational use of cannabis. Only 8% of Americans say marijuana should be illegal. The size of the legal global cannabis market amounted to $10.6 billion in 2018 and is projected to be $97 billion in 2027. On average, a person would spend $25 to $50 every time he or she goes to a pot store. And I'll tell you why I highlighted this particular statistic. Now you might say the projection is ambitious, but please be reminded that it is not a brand new industry with uh, zero customer base to start with. In fact, the global cannabis market is already massive, but it just wasn't legal. So what the big corporation want to do now is to redirect the customer back into the legal market. Going back to the statistic where each customer would, would typically spend $25 to $50 every time they visit a pot store, I, I just really want to highlight that it is an affordable purchase, in fact quite similar to eating out at a decent restaurant or going to watch a movie. So even though it is more expensive to purchase cannabis product from a legal store, they are likely to do it rather than going back to the black market because it is not worth taking the risk people would be happy to spend an extra 10 to 15 bucks to avoid the troubles buying from the black market. That would be the case at least for the developed countries in North America and also Europe. The cannabis market is still in a rather early stage where market is fragmented 
and competition is intense. For investors, it would be more logical to firstly know about the market leaders before drilling into the small cap area. So the first one is Canopy Growth Corporation. It's a Canadian company listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange with a market cap of 7.5 billion Canadian dollars and is the market leader in cannabis. It is a vertically integrated business that grows, processes, and distributes cannabis products. The revenue for financial year 2019 amounts to $327 million. So the next company we're going to talk about is Aurora Cannabis. It's also a Canadian company listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange and New York Stock Exchange. It has a market cap of $1.3 billion. Uh, it has eight production facilities, five sale licenses and operations in 25 countries. The, the revenue for uh, financial year 2019 was $247 million. And again, it is a vertically integrated company that does everything from cultivation all the way to distribution of both medical and recreational used cannabis. The third company I'm going to go through is Tilray Inc. It's also a Canadian company listed on NASDAQ. Uh, has a cap market cap of $902 million revenue of $167 million in financial year 19. Also a vertically integrated company. So one thing in common for the past three companies is that they were not profitable for the past financial year nor have they been consistently profitable since listed on the stock exchange. However, each of them are experiencing exponential reven revenue growth. And if you enjoy the volatility as well as the potential growth, feel free to look deeper into these stocks. The following two are also involved in the cannabis industry, but they offer something slightly different to us investors. The fourth company we want to cover is GW Pharmaceuticals. It is an established British biopharmaceutical company listed on the NASDAQ. It has uh, the core business in biopharmaceutical industry but also tapped into the cannabis area. In financial year 2019, the revenue from cannabis product amounted to $104 million, which is slightly below Tilray Inc. It is suitable for investors who want the exposure in the weed industry but are more concerned about the volatility. GW Pharmaceuticals offer a stability in earnings as well as stock price. The last one I want to go through is Innovative Industrial Properties. It is a real estate investment trust that engage in the acquisition, ownership and management of specialized properties leased to cannabis producer like the one we listed above. While this company offers exposure to the growth opportunity in the cannabis industry, the risk is substantially lower as it derives the income from rental properties, which is more stable and predictable. Now just a heads up, a growing market does not mean you can blindly purchase a stock and expect a profit down the track. Some companies might not even be around in a year's time and you could lose all your investment as a result. We need to be more prudent for investing our money. In my subsequent videos, I could dive deeper into specific topics looking at what are the products, the competition level in the market, the regulatory environment, uh, what are the key performance metrics when looking into cannabis stock. I would also like to analyze specific company to see whether they're worth investing in. Leave a like if you enjoyed the content and let me know if you want me to cover a specific company. I'll see you next time.